Amidst the coronavirus pandemic, people feeling mild symptoms of the virus can face a difficult choice, either leave their home to see a doctor and risk exposing themselves and others, or stay home and forego medical advice. What's happening is that people are worried, they're frightened, people don't know really what to do, where to go, whether or not they should get a test for the, for the virus. That's where telemedicine comes in. Our doctors will initially start off with going through an initial assessment. Do you have a fever? What's your temperature been? Do you have a cough, shortness of breath? CareClix is a telemedicine company with more than 20 million users across the U.S. And it says it's seen a 50% uptick in users in March. From the user's perspective, for the patient and or the doctor, they're not doing anything different than they would if you came and saw me face to face. The only thing different is now we're, we have a, a, a monitor between us, essentially. Along with other providers who license its technology, CareClix is offering its COVID-19 evaluations for free. If you fit the criteria, we make a judgment call, you're really sick, yes, go to the hospital, go to the emergency room, have them, have them see you. But people who are not that acute, that we feel can we manage remotely, we're going to be able to manage remotely and, and assess them and kind of guide them through the process. According to the CDC, most people with COVID-19 have mild symptoms and are able to recover at home without medical care. More virtual checkups should mean fewer patients crowding into hospitals where resources are already stretched incredibly thin. I think in some ways it is a breakout moment because I think that we're now saying, hey, here's a real value uh, proposition for what this sort of technology allows healthcare to do. Not all telemedicine companies are approaching COVID-19 the same way. Based in Minnesota, Zipnosis has built a web-based questionnaire for people who think they might have the virus. So what we said was, let's develop a way where a patient and provider don't have to interact real time. Let's take um, really smart computer systems and have them do the bulk of the work. As you're going through the questions, we're constantly calculating on the back end, are you, are you still appropriate for virtual care? And so in some cases, the, the software will say, you're too sick, what you should do is go into a clinic setting. Although a computer is making these initial judgments, any final diagnosis is made by a real clinician who reviews each patient's answers. We take all of that data and information and we package it up for the clinician to make a diagnosis in an average of 89 seconds with higher adherence to guidelines than uh, in-person care. Zipnosis claims its system can dramatically increase efficiency. It takes a lot of the burden off of the clinician, first of all, but second, it makes it really easy for you as a patient. Currently, 51 healthcare providers use the company's technology. 21 of them offer this COVID-19 virtual screening for free. In March, Zipnosis saw a 3,600% increase in virtual visits on its platform in just 11 days. It's been a desire of the industry for a long time where we stop talking about telemedicine or virtual care and it just becomes healthcare. And I think this will be the catalyst for that. But the sudden growth has proved challenging. Across telemedicine platforms, virtual wait times have ranged anywhere from a few minutes to a couple of hours. As a result, healthcare companies have had to rapidly hire new clinicians to meet the growing demand. Zipnosis, for one, says that more than 1,400 new clinicians were trained on its platform in March. Telemedicine has been around for over 25 years. The adoption and utilization of telehealth by both consumers as well as clinicians was pretty anemic, it was low. And what has happened in the last couple of weeks is just an incredible surge of interest in terms of telehealth services. Still, some patients are hesitant to use telemedicine. There's a concern that somehow it's impersonal. And in point of fact, you all know that you've interacted with a physician or a clinician and have had them provide a lot of services to you without ever laying hands on you. So part of it is overcoming this myth that somehow it's second-class medicine. 